All right, we're going to tackle this really quick case today. It's a SanDisk, old, old, old SanDisk unit. Uh, it's not every day you see them come in in a red package like that. Out of my stash, which currently has over 300 SanDisk flash drives previously repaired, I found one that is exactly the same as this. And that's what's going to help us to restore data from our uh, client's device because what I'm going to show you now uh, will show you exactly uh, what the challenges will arise with encountering a problem like this. So we have a controller uh, 2062-00136-3 controller. Oh, there is a 2099 that looks nearly identical. Let's assume that's the one. And boom, it says encrypted. Uh, so the data directly off the chip cannot be obtained. So when I probe this um, resistor that is standing out a little bit because it's got this like bubble in there. You see? It doesn't produce the noise when I'm probing it. This is the donor unit. The noise is produced. So, on the donor unit where the noise is produced, we check this component, this component, no short, but on the one that has a blown fuse, We have a short on this do on this uh, component right here. <laughs> and we're not supposed to have it. So we got five volts coming in, going through this resistor, hitting this. So we get voltage here. Where does this go? So if we were to inject voltage to this line, You know, I think we may have some bad capacitors because when I inject Let's push a couple of these aside and see if the, if the line is still in short. It's something that leads directly to the controller, so... That's going to give us a confirmation.
So I pushed over both of these capacitors because they are on the same line. Over here, this is somehow connected through via to the same plane that is linked here. So if we had only one of them, so this, let's say we didn't know that this com com component was bad, what we could do, I'll put an isolated wire in there and I'll uh, clean off that wire a little bit further down the line so we can test it all right so that's where we're going to do the injection but for the visual it would be great to have um, this wire sticking out so let's go and um, because they're, these two components are located on different sides uh, how are we going to test it? it's not very comfortable to uh, uh, inject voltage here to see what starts to cook up on this side so instead we're going to do the opposite which is going to run the wire out and with the wire being ran out, it uh, makes it a lot easier to manipulate this thing. So let me put this onto the ground. All right, so that's grounded now. We can spray the cold, uh, the probe to that's currently injecting one volt into this line and look what happens you see it immediately goes uh, discolored like that so let's see what happens again I'm going to spray more see right there this is getting hot so we know that that capacitor is bad that can give us a clue to remove it if you haven't removed it already that would be a good time so to remove it do we need to replace it with a new one or not uh, it's probably some kind of like a filter so I mean if we have it already might as well now to test whether our component is good or not we just push it over to uh, one tab Diode test mode on the multimeter. If we hear it ring like that, we need to get rid of this component. It's bad. It's not helping us in any way. Now we need to probe the, uh, the pads that it's uh, been removed off of to make sure there's no short on them. And there's no more short, you see? But we do have a blown fuse because this is a protection here.
this is a resistor it should produce this noise this is a healthy one so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna we can put a technically we can put a piece of wire in place but since we got this uh, device here we'll just take all the components we need So the resistor the cap and this cap can go back in place. Okay, so now we should get a single beep going across the uh, uh, interface, the connector itself. So the red goes on the uh, ground, the black on the power. Single short beep, good, that means our fuse is back on. Our fuse should be con constantly ringing. This should produce a single beep. This constantly ringing. And this single beep. We're all set. I think we should be good to go. Uh, I have a connection here. Plug it in. Because this is an encryptive, encryptive controller, we can't recover data directly off the chip. So, uh, hoping that the controller is good. Power up. We got PHY light. Perfect. So, if we go into universal utility, just to see if uh, we got access to the data. And uh, up here, as you can see, the beautiful LED is blinking away lightly. Um, can go into universal utility sector oops no sorry wrong command uh, sector edit there is our boot sector let's go ahead and scan it so only 47 chains this is gonna go super quick once it's captured we can create a file list and send that over this was a quick and easy recovery, guys. Uh, sometimes, you know, due to a failed capacitor, the whole device stops operating. Um, in our case, what was kind of deceiving about it is the fact that uh, when I first plugged it in during test, it was consuming uh, nothing. Um, if, if the device is consuming nothing, it doesn't really give me many clues. That means the uh, controller is not connected. What can disconnect the controller? Well, this device specifically, had um, somewhat primitive power surge protection uh, so we have this fuse located right here that burnt out when this line uh, got hot okay this line got hot because of this capacitor it uh, blew up the resistor here the resistor here cut uh, everything from the controller uh, 2062-00136-3 component level failure solved if you guys need this service link in the description thank you for watching we'll see you in the next episode